What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John plays here, and today, well, this is gonna be your guide for finding every single shrine in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Satisfy, and their Switch Grip Pro. So the Switch Grip Pro holds your Nintendo Switch super nicely when in handheld mode, and what's unique about it, well one, it makes you feel like you're holding a Pro Controller instead of a Joy-Con, but the right side is actually angled a little bit more for a better ergonomic feel. I've had a chance to get my hands on one of the prototypes that they sent me over, and it's by far my favorite way to play my Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. It's really good with Splatoon, by the way. Visit the link down below so that you can get your hands on a Switch Grip Pro, the best way to play your Nintendo Switch in handheld mode. So in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there are four mandatory shrines on the Great Plateau, 116 additional shrines once you leave the Great Plateau, and then an additional four shrines once you get the DLC part two, and then there's an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve shrines that aren't really shrines, but they're kind of shrines, but they don't give you spirit orbs. I don't know if they would count as shrines. Anyways, today's mostly going to be a, a video on the location of all of them. Now, this is a comment I've gotten a lot of times on my channel, and there's a very good chance that you've gotten 118 of the 120 shrines, and just for the life of you, you cannot find the last few. Well, this video is perfect for you. As I'm going through, I'm actually going to be having the number that I'm talking about on screen, and in the description down below is going to be all of the shrines in the order that I'm mentioning them in this video, with a link to where there's a more detailed explanation on where the shrine is and how to complete it if you need help. Also, I usually have most of the hidden chests located inside of those videos. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm mostly going to be breaking down by continent, so like I'm going to be going over all of Hebra and Tabantha as one single continent. If they have sort of a more difficult way to find them, I'm going to give you some advice on that. But if they're right out in the open, I'm just going to show you right where it is. Starting at the most northwest part of the map, this is the Haya Mayu Shrine, a major test of strength. It's at the most top left part of the map. It's pretty difficult to miss. It's right out in the open. Just a little bit to the west of that is the Tu Kuomo Shrine. This one, according to the map, is right below the Hebra North Summit. You can check here with the topographical, and then right above that at the Hebra Great Skeleton. Now the Hebra Great Skeleton is actually underground. There's going to be a door located right here, which is right next to this patch of water right here. From the patch of water on the map, we're located right here. You're going to continue up the hill a little bit, and that's where you're gonna be finding some snowballs. The snowballs are located right here. You wanna grab one of the largest snowballs and drop it down the hill after using Cryonis right there. That way the snowball goes directly down and opens up the doors. We're going north to south, so we're gonna jump all the way over here. And this is going to bring us to the North Tabantha Snowfield. This is the Shah Gemma Shrine. It's right out in the open. There is a line located right here, so be careful. Directly to the west of that is the North Lomai Labyrinth which is a blessing shrine. In order to get the shortcut for here, it's super simple. You need to climb up to the top. There's a diamond at the very top in the middle. And then right about here is where you're gonna wanna hop down and that's gonna give you a higher up ramp. You're gonna be able to travel there, no problem. Continuing on this continent, right here at the Byron Snow Shelf is the Mozo Sheno Shrine. And it's actually underground. So what you're gonna wanna do is come to this little shelf right there. All you need to do is glide on. You can even climb down really if you want to. And it, uh, it's a pretty, pretty easy opening. Like from right down there, you just drop down here and you're good to go. Great. Directly west of the Byron Snow Shelf, a little bit north, this is the Shada Naw Shrine. This is the one next to Selmy Spot. Selmy is the one who does the um, shield surfing courses. The shrine is located right next to the house. It's pretty difficult to miss if you've ever been to this area. Continuing to the right is going to be the Bakita Snow Grove. Right here is the Rock Uwag Shrine. This one is actually located underneath one of these giant stones, so I'll zoom out a little bit. And then I'll zoom in a little bit. Of all these large stones, you're gonna to wanna to go to the most top left one, and it's gonna be underneath it. Can't miss it. To the right of that is the DLC's two shrine, involved with Ravioli's quest. This is the Kia Toza Shrine. 
From Selmy Spot, if you head directly southwest of there, you're going to find Hebra Peak. And on Hebra Peak, there's only a Korok Seed, but directly underneath it is the Goma Asag Shrine. This one has a whole bunch of very large icicles. You're going to need to melt them either with having a fire weapon equipped, lighting some firewood, and you should be able to burn it down no problem. To the west of Hebra Peak, you're going to be finding the Snowfield Stable, and there's going to be a shrine right there. And directly... To the west of that is going to be the entrance to the Forgotten Temple. This is where you need to enter after you have all 120 of the original shrines. From the Forgotten Temple, you make your way to the end to the Rona Kacha Shrine. There is, uh, I think, about 17 guardians inside of there, so be careful. Making our way from the Snowfield Stable and the Rin Uya Shrine, you're going to want to make your way southwest. Right here is Hepper Tower. Directly northwest of Hepper Tower is the Gi Hara Shrine. This shrine, just like the one that evolved the Great Skeleton, is actually hidden behind a large snow door. If you haven't opened up this one already, you're going to want to go to right about here. From the marker I showed you, you're going to find a small campsite right here with a whole bunch of tiny little snowballs. In order to knock down the door, you're going to want to go, I believe it's the second from the left? Yep, confirmed. Second from the left, it goes right down and knocks open that door and gives you access to this shrine. Right here is a very easy shrine to miss. This is the Lano Ku Shrine. This one is located underneath this large rock right here. At the Lano Ku Shrine, there's a whole bunch of ways to get inside of here. One of them is to knock down a tree and then ride a log inside of here. Or you can pretty much just climb on the walls. And then once you climb on the walls, you make your way to the middle. It's giant and glowing. It's pretty hard to miss. From the flight range a little bit to the north, this is the Maka Ra Shrine. Now, the Makara Shrine is actually a little bit difficult to get to. It's not right out in the open. While the Makara Shrine is visible from the docks right here on the lake, you're going to want to make yourself to this little alcove, this cutout right here. It's also noted with four torches, so it's a little difficult to miss. If you enter, you're going to find a wind tunnel. That's how you know you're in the right place. Make your way on down, take the patch of water underneath this rock, and it brings you directly to the shrine, and you're good to go. We're going to wait back down slightly at the flight range. Directly below it is the Shah Warvo Shrine. That's right out in the open. You probably already did this one. And then at the flight range itself is the No Raji Shrine. This is a DLC 2 shrine that requires you to shoot a whole bunch of targets real fast. From Rito Village, there's going to be the one inside of town. Ak Vokot Shrine. Directly to the west of that is Werbler's Nest. This is the Vuloda Shrine. This one is done after finishing Rivali's quest line. You need to go here, activate a quest that involves finding one of the little Rito girls, and then you go throughout all of Rito Village to cook salmon minier, and then you come back here and then you shoot a Korok leaf through the holes. Again, if you need more specific information on some of these shrine quests, I'm going to be linking in the description down below all of the shrines in order that I'm talking about them, and links to more specific details on all of them. Funny enough, if you take the path from Werbler's Nest right along, this is the Burita Nog Shrine. This one is activated with a pedestal that's right here. It involves hitting it with fire at a certain time of the day. I think it's like 12.40 p.m. Don't quote me on that. This one is also done only after completing the Rito quest line. Directly to the west of that, you're going to be finding yourself the Dumba Tog Shrine. This one is located pretty much all the way underneath all of these rocks right here. So it's a little difficult to find. You're best off just making your way down to the ground floor and then walking right over to it. Continuing our way down to the Tabantha Tower, south of the Tabantha Tower and the Great Fairy Fountain, here's the ancient column, the Tena Kosa Shrine. You probably found this one. There's a memory that involves standing like right there or something. And then once you follow the ancient columns all the way down past the highlands, there's this large plain piece of land. This is the Ka Okio Shrine. This one involves using stasis on a large rock that's covering a hole that gives you access to this shrine. That's it for the Tabantha Hebra continent. Let's make our way over to the Ridgeland Woodland continent. I'm going to be cutting this one off pretty much right here and then going along the river upward. So first, let's start at the Mooglatan Shrine. I'm also going to be going in sort of a clockwise fashion. This one is the one that's on Satori Mountain, home to the Lord of the Mountain. Going northeast of the Muglata Shrine is Washa's Bluff. On Washa's Bluff, this is actually going to be a shrine quest that involves standing on a pedestal naked under a blood moon. Fun stuff. Uh, if you have the Travel Medallion, great place to set it down. Wait for the blood moon to happen. 
And then making our way back to Muglata Shrine to the northwest is the Shim Dogozi Shrine. This one involves shooting an arrow through two small holes. It's done more toward the left of it. It's kind of like, like, I think it's this one and that one on the map. Pretty sure it's those two. Making our way up to the Hyrule Ridge, past the Scab Lands. Right here, you're going to be finding the Tabantha Bridge Stable, and there's the Shea Lola Shrine. Guarantee you have that one. At the Ridgeland Tower, if you go to the west, this is the Thundera Plateau. This one is a quest involving getting a whole bunch of orbs into these four small holes right here. The orbs are very difficult to get up because it is raining. But directly to the west of that, is Zalta Wa Shrine. This one you can glide to from the tower very easily. You're just gonna see it as you glide down, I promise. North of the Ridgeland Tower, you're gonna be finding yourself the Serene Stable, and there's three shrines that are located right here. One is Salria Hill. This one is located right out in the open, very difficult to miss. To the left of that is the Mog Nora Shrine. This one is high up on a cliff that involves you shooting a bomb arrow directly at it. And then this one right here is the Shira Gomar Shrine. This one involves DLC part two. I believe this is also part of Ravioli's quest. Making our way from the Serene Stable, we're gonna head very west to the Woodland Tower. From Woodland Tower, there's one right here at Pico Pond. And this one here at Pico Pond, it's right next to the Woodland Stable, right out in the open, pretty hard to miss. North of Woodland Tower is the Lost Woods and the Korok Forest. The Kiel Rug Shrine is right out in the open. However, the Mog Holland Shrine, the Dog Choka Shrine, I don't know, and the Kun Sadaj Shrine involve three Korok quests. You speak to a man right next to the Great Tree. He has a little red icon by, right by his talk bubble. Talk to him. He initiates the three quests. You go to the three different sides of the Lost Wood to start those three quests. At the Tiflo Ruins, this area is completely in the darkness. There is also a Stall Cobble, Stall Henix here. Stall Henix, that's it. And it involves you to get an orb to a pedestal. Pretty easy to do. The orb is illuminated. I think you need to kill the Stall Henix. Uh -oh. Wait, he's not a Stall Henix. I think he's a blue Henix. Now we're going to be making our way to the Elden Tower. Directly to the west of Elden Tower, you're going to be finding the Sa Daj Shrine. The Hajj Shrine. This one is right out in the open, right next to the ruins right here. Oh, it's not a ruin. That's a that's a camp. Sorry. Directly south of that is the Foothill Stable. There's a shrine next to that. That's the Moa Keet Shrine. And to the left of that, the south left, this is the Ta Mul Shrine. This one is also out in the open. However, it's a little difficult to get to because there's a whole bunch of rocks surrounding it. You just want to make that marker on your map and you can get there no problem. From Elden Tower directly to the left, there's one right out in the open at Gorambi Lake. You could just glide there from the tower. From Goron City, there's the one that I know you have. It's the Shea Mosa Shrine. And then also one that you definitely have is the Daka Ko Shrine. This one is right next to the Bridge of Elden. Directly to the south of here is the Keira Ma Shrine. This one is located at Gorko Tunnel. Also a great shrine quest to use the travel medallion on. Put the travel medallion right there. At Goron City, you need to make your way to the, I believe it's the general store or the house to the left of it, right here. There's gonna be a guy inside of there who's like flipping out that he can't find his brother, he went to a mine or something, and then you need to make your way to this location, enter Gorko Tunnel, he's gonna be like passed out or something, you need to come down here, you need to grab one of the pieces of rock food, you need to make your way up the hill, killing all the enemies or avoiding all the rocks, to here to Gorko Tunnel, he cooks it up, you get to enter. Directly to the west of Gorko Tunnel is the Kinu Hanika Shrine. This one is a DLC 2 quest. Also after defeating Valrudania, directly to the west, this is the Sharo Lun Shrine, it's located right here. This is also part of DLC 2. And directly to the north, right here is the Gore Tor Shrine. This is the gut check challenge. Great way to get some rupees. Not very fast though. Now we're going to be making our way to North Akala. Directly to the west of the gut check rock is the Skull Lake. And on the taller one is the Zuna Kai Shrine. This is a blessing just for going here. It's right out in the open, real easy. Make sure it's not raining though. Directly to the west of that, is the Akala Ancient Tech Lab. From the Akala Ancient Tech Lab, if you go north, is the Lomai Labyrinth. Easy way to defeat the Lomai Labyrinth, you just want to climb to this one spot right there. 
Once you climb right there, you're gonna find the entrance, you're good to go. Directly south of that is the East Akala Stable. Well, there's also a shrine right here. The Katosa Og Shrine. Directly to the west of the East Akala Stable, you're gonna be finding the Spring of Power. This requires you to have a, here at the Spring of Power, you're required to have a dragon scale from the fire dragon. So uh, just drop it in the water, you're good to go. Making our way south of the East Akala Stable at the Rist Peninsula, this is the Ritag Zumo Shrine. This one involves you taking an orb from this small pedestal right here, and then making your way all the way around to right there. Or if you're like me, you just use stasis on it, hit it really hard, land right there, hit it hard again, land right there. Use Cryonis if you need to. Going our way south of the Rist Peninsula, you're gonna find Tingle Island. This is the Ka Male Shrine. You may need to enter this area from going from Davi Island all the way north. Cause there's like a little bridge right here that makes it easier. Out here in the middle of the ocean is the key Dafunia Shrine. This is a part of DLC 2, part of Mipha's quest. To the left of Tingle Island, you're gonna find the Oria Grotto. This one is the Kinia Shaka Shrine. This one is also hidden underneath of cliffside blocked by boulders. So make sure it's not raining, use a bomb arrow, shoot it, it opens up no problem. North of that just a little bit is the Da Hesho Shrine. This one is right out in the open and most likely gonna be your fast travel point anytime you need to go to Tarrytown. Just to the left of the Da Hesho Shrine is Akala Tower. From Akala Tower, you could probably make your way to the South Akala Stable and the Za Kesho Shrine. In the Lanayru region, there's the Naiz Yoma Shrine. It's right in the middle of the Zora Town, you can't miss it. To the north at the Upland Zorana, this is part of DLC 2 Quest. And the area right before you fought the Lionel at Polymus Mountain, this is the Ma Alia Shrine. This one is also a DLC quest part two. From Zora's Domain, if you go just a little bit here to the Veiled Falls, this one you can do only do after doing the entire Zora quest line. Here at the Veiled Falls, you're going to take the champion's weapon that Mipha's father gives you, the king, and you're going to stab the thing in the water from up high. So when you're up high, you hit the, the weapon button and then you go down and you strike it, you're good to go. To the left of the Veiled Falls, you're gonna make your way down Zora's River and right here, you're going to find the So Kofi Shrine. This one is also located just north of Lanayru Tower. It's on a small hill, can't miss it. North of that even more is the Shi Rada Shrine. This one is right out in the open, can't miss it. Directly south of that, you're gonna find all these tiny little islands and right here on Shrine Island, hint, hint, there's a shrine. It's the Daka Tush Shrine. This one's right out in the open. To the left of the Daka Tush Shrine, you're gonna be finding yourself the Wetland Stable, and to the left of that is the Kaya Wan Shrine. Before making our way to Kakariko, we're gonna head to the east. Here is the Misa Lo Shrine. Here at the Misa Lo Shrine, this is gonna be a shrine quest. In order to solve this shrine quest, you need to make your way on top of this pedestal while riding a buck. That's a male deer, the one with the horns. Directly to the east of that, you're gonna find yourself on the Samamsa Plain. This one is the Ruko Mog Shrine. This one is right out in the open. Directly to the east of that, you're going to find yourself to the Horan Lagoon. This is the Shai Yoda Shrine. This one involves destroying a whole bunch of rocks over here that open up a whole bunch of different airways. And then once all the airways are cleared, it creates an airway going over here. You need to ride that all the way over with your power glider and land on it, still with the power glider out. Now we're gonna be making our way to Dueling Peaks Hatino area, also Kakariko Village. In Kakariko Village, there's one right next to the Great Fairy Fountain, the Talo Naig Shrine. And then also, after doing three different side quests inside of Kakariko Village, it creates a shrine quest that opens up a shrine right here, the Lakna Roki Shrine. Again, if you need more details on how to activate some of these shrines, you can check in the description down below for the shrine I mentioned and a way to defeat it. Directly to the west of that is the Floet Sandbar, the Gila Rao Shrine. This is the crazy flower lady. Making our way back to Kakariko Village, once you head southeast, right here is going to be the Dao Nae Shrine. This one is behind the waterfall. You can enter from this piece of land right here. Not too far away, southwest of that, this is the Kam Urag Shrine, which involves you to wait tonight. There's gonna to be a statue with glowing eyes. You shoot it in the face. Making our way to the right, to Mount Lanayru, at the very top of that is the Spring of Wisdom and a fantastic shrine quest. Hands down, favorite shrine quest in the game. This is the Jata Sami Shrine. 
Once we make our way south of the Spring of Wisdom, it's located on this large cliff right here going down the mountain. Also another way to find it that actually is the, uh, the shrine quest itself. There's one tree here, one tree here, one tree here, and if you keep going to the right, that's the shrine. The Ta- the Ta no Oa Shrine. We're gonna circle down the coast and then head back west. So, from Luneru, that's gonna bring you to the Ancient Tech Lab in Hatino Village. In Hatino Village is the Mayam Agana Shrine. Pretty sure you have that one. South of that is the Nakluda Sea and the Chas Keda Shrine. This one you usually get to by either swimming or using Cryonis, or most likely you came here to the Muwao Jim Shrine and then just glided down. The Muao Jim Shrine is located right here at this little cliff edge. Located in the southwest of the map is Eventide Island. Enough said? Enough said? Great. Making our way back from Eventide here at the Muao Jim Shrine, you're gonna make your way pretty much directly west but on ground level. And here's the Palamor Ruins. This is the Ka Ya Shrine. This is a shrine quest that involves taking pictures of three different pieces of the Twilight Mirror from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. One is located right here in this patch of rubble. One is located over here in this little alcove. It might be over here though. And one is located here at Soka Point. So from this area, you're also gonna find the Lurland Village. And at Lurland Village, directly to the north of that is gonna be your fast travel point for the village. From the Karim Shrine to the north, this is the Tawa Jin Shrine. The Tawa Jin Shrine involves you going to this platform right here as well as this platform right here and this platform right here there's three different levels of Henixes. after you kill all three you take their orbs and you put them into the three areas right here at the Taran pass well to the west of it and then that's going to activate the shrine for you making our way to the southwest of that we're going to find the large flora area flora bridge flora falls is the Shrine Quest of Song of Storms. You basically put a metal weapon on top of here while it is raining, thunder strikes it, opens it up, you're good to go. Of Alternatively, you just get struck by the lightning, but you don't need to. To the north of that is Riola Spring, another shrine that's underneath the waterfall. You can enter it from this piece of land directly right here. Main our way south of the last one to Ubuta Point. This is the Shai Uto Shrine. This is right next to the Lakeside Stable. This is the easiest stable to miss in the game. This involves you to use a bomb on a bomb wall right here, opens up the shrine. Directly north of that, you're gonna find yourself the Farron Tower. From Farron Tower, you're gonna make your way north to the Spring of Courage. This involves you to have a scale of the Thunder Dragon, my Thunder Buddy. And then once we go south of that, here in Farron Woods, there's one right out in the open, the Pumag Naiti Shrine. Making our way south of that, you're going to find the Highland Stable and the shrine accompanying it. To the southwest of that, that's going to be the Shoka Tatoni Shrine. Guys, I'm not good at saying these names. I'm sorry. Uh, this one is a fun side shrine quest that involves you to take pictures of a guardian scout, a walking guardian, and a flying guardian to show it to a girl who's obsessed with guardians. North of that, you're going to find Lake Tower, just north of Lake Tower at the Ya Naga Shrine. This one's on Hylia Island, directly to the west of Bridge of Hylia. Making our way north past Scouts Hill. Now, here's the Great Plateau. I'm pretty sure I don't need to go over the Great Plateau ones, but... Right here, you're going to be finding the Bosch Kala Shrine. This one is right out in the open, probably the first shrine that you did in the game. West of that, you're going to find Dueling Peaks Tower and three shrines that are all on Dueling Peaks. Two are at one, two are at each of the two cliff tops, and one is pretty much at ground level. Continuing our way west, right next to the Dueling Peak Stable, is the Ha Dana Da Ha Mar Shrine. You probably have this one as well. And south of this is. Hikale Woods and the Toto Sa Shrine. This one involves you to stand right here, shoot a bomb over to this guy, and then use Cryonis to make your way on over. Should be no problem. Before I go over Central Hyrule, I'm just gonna complete the circle here in the Gerudo area. So, from Lake Tower, you're gonna make your way southwest to this large plateau right here, not to be confused with this plateau. And here, there's someone who's like hanging out with garbage, it's really weird. This is the Isha Ishto So Shrine. 
Directly west of that is the Suma Sama Shrine. This is a very difficult shrine quest involving holding a snowball at a specific time of day of a specific size of snowball. Best of luck. Again, if you need help, in the description, there's a link on a more detailed explanation. Directly to the west of that is the South Lomai Labyrinth, the easiest labyrinth to defeat. You just need to go to this spot right there. Making our way to the west, here is the Kiev Tala Shrine. This is part of DLC 2 for Thick Arbosa's quest. And right out here in the middle of the desert is the Masai Suma Shrine. I'll zoom out a little bit just so you get a general idea on where that guy is. This one is also a great place to use your travel medallion. There's a shrine quest that involves going from here back to Gerudo Town. And then you need to go to the Ice House, then back to Gerudo Town, then back out here. Like I said, travel medallion. Making our way to the lowest, lowest area to the absolute west is the Hawakoth Shrine. This is also where a great fairy is. You probably have this one. Directly to the north is the Thokeyu Shrine. This one involves defeating a Moldulga and then lighting four torches on all four sides right here. Pretty much directly to the north of that is a DLC 2 shrine, the Takama Shiri Shrine. Yep, names. And then to the northwest of that is the Kemazu Shrine. And there is a shrine quest going from Gerudo Town, from this exit right here. And then you're going to go to all the girls that are holding the swords out. And then you follow the swords through the sandstorm. And then it brings you right there. You're good to go. Next to Gerudo Town is the Daku Chosei Shrine. You have this. And then after finishing the Gerudo quest line is the Sand Seal Rally right next to the town. So directly to the east of Gerudo Town, you're going to find this whole big area with a whole bunch of statues. These are the eight heroines. There are a whole bunch of orbs that you need to put in their corresponding pedestals and then it opens up this shrine. Directly to the north of that is the Gerudo Canyon Stable and the K No Shrine. Then if you climb your way up from the Gerudo Canyon Stable and then head on over here to the Great Cliffs, you're going to find the Dako Ta Shrine. North of that is going to be the Gerudo Tower. At Gerudo Tower, there's a shrine quest to unlock this shrine, the Sasa Kai Shrine, that involves the sun shining down at a specific time. Cass helps you with it. To the northwest of here, you're going to be finding the Sho Dantu Shrine. Two bombs. At the show, Dantu Shrine is a very difficult shrine quest and involves getting luminoid stone and putting it on this pedestal. Best of luck. From the Yiga Clan hideout, you're going to make your way from where you fought the Yiga Clan captain. There's a DLC 2 shrine here. However, to the east, you're going to be finding the Ka Takar Shrine. This is in an extremely large iceberg. Just uh, set it on fire. Making your way up the snow field, you're going to find a shrine over here. This is the Kia Yug Shrine. Here at the Kia Yug Shrine, this involves a shrine quest of shooting a shock arrow to a large uh, painting on a wall. You just need to shoot right the middle of it. You should be good to go. Also, a great place to use a travel medallion. You could just go to the cliff above it, place it down there, hop down, and try again. Make our way to the left of Gerudo Summit. By the way, right here, there's going to be a Lionel. There's also the Sword of the Eighth Heroine used for the Sand Boots quest. Keeping our way down, right here in the middle of the out, uh, just right out in the open, is the, Kimia, is the Kima Kusasa Shrine. From the Wasteland Tower, directly north here, is the Jula Na Shrine. This is a, uh, a fire challenge, which you need to stand on it when it's hot and then when it's on fire. So, fun time there. Directly south of that is the G Na Shrine. This one's actually visible from the Great Plateau right out in the open. Right here at the Dig Dog Suspension Bridge, directly west of the Great Plateau, this is at the very bottom floor. So you need to hop here, here's the Henix, and then right down below is the shrine. This is the Da Kaso Shrine. Making our way north of that, here is the Rhoda O Shrine. This is the shrine for the outskirts stable. Making our way north of the outskirts stable and the Colosseum, you're going to be finding the Kam Yatak Shrine. This is right out in the open, not far away from Central Tower. Directly to the east of that, you're going to be finding the Riverside Stable and the Wa Go Kata Shrine. Uh, fun fact, if somehow you're watching this video and you didn't complete the game already, or go to the Lost Woods yet, you can actually find... Um, has to here and trade in more Korok seeds before he goes away. Continuing our way north from the Riverside Stable, here is going to be the Wetland Stable. Directly north of that is going to be the Na 
Namika Oz Shrine. This one is also kind of out in the open. It's just inside of this large circular structure right here. I'll zoom out to give you a better idea and reference of its location. Now we make our way to Hyrule Castle here in the main town area. Here is the Katachuki Shrine. This one is right out in the open. To the northwest of that is the Noya Niha Shrine. This one involves you going to, I believe, the north or northwest side. There's a whole bunch of uh, branches you need to burn down and then also a bomb wall, if I'm not mistaken. And the last shrine for you to find is the Sas Kosa Shrine. This one is inside of the actual castle. You need to make your way from the north moat and then you're gonna make your way inside of here. It's very difficult to miss, but you're gonna wanna enter from right there. After editing, if I missed any of them, it's gonna be playing right now. And if I didn't miss anything, you should have seen nothing. That's all 120 shrines. There was a counter in the bottom right. Be sure to check it out. I want to make sure you guys get your 120 shrines. Also, after doing all 120, make sure you make your way back to the Forgotten Temple and get yourself the Of the Wild clothing. Guys, I hope you found this super useful. There's a card appearing in the top right with a whole bunch of other great videos for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Some great guides and tutorials. If you found this video useful, be sure to drop a like. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.